Hello and welcome to today's lecture. We're going to go back uh, probably tomorrow to a little bit more about sales, um, talk about uh, more about call reluctance, which you remember that term for your test. We'll talk a little bit more about something called the list, how uh, sales can get lists, how they work their list, and those type of things. And again, working on a, um, a guest, I'll talk about that as well. I told you it's a little harder sometimes uh, to get a guest in during the summer in some of these settings. I want to talk a little bit about news and how news has changed. Um, give you an example. So back in 2001, I was starting a business and um, I started to um, there was a magazine based business cover the Texas Tech Athletics. I realized pretty quickly, hey, magazine's probably not great it's good for certain things and the magazine still exists today still makes money today i don't own it any longer but uh, it's still out there in the world existing but thinking of a different way that we could get people primarily texas tech people their athletic news more timely again for you you're going now well hey that makes a lot of sense i mean it's easy write a website do a website go to web reporting and all that back then it really wasn't that the big, it wasn't that prevalent. So we started this uh, over here to the site, redreadersports.com, again, which is still in existence. So I'm logged in there on the top as Robert G. And you got to use your profile and all those things. Um, but you see, these, these are the stories here. So if you're waiting for a magazine, a monthly magazine or a bi-monthly magazine or however it is, uh, by the time you get it, this stuff is old news. And so... So you've got a chance here, you see, uh, even if you just want football, you just want basketball, you want baseball, you want other, there it is, right there to be seen. And then you see more down the line, different stories, and they're part of a network, Rivals.com network, so they um, they have other things from other other uh, conference opponents. There's a photo gallery showing our new sports performance center, all this, that, again, if you had a magazine, it doesn't make sense. And then... Here's what really is the kicker here is the forums, the message boards. And it's a way for community to um, interact with each other. So let's look for some that they've had that uh, you see right here, this one here, new locker rooms to be unveiled. It's got 9,164 views. Obviously, there's that's not unique to us because a lot of them are coming back and, and replying. But there's a lot. There's a lot there. There's a lot of views. And so, uh, but it's a way not only do you have the news, but also you have a way the news can uh, interact with each other. So just like what, like we do in our class where you have, and here down here down below, you can see this is where they can start um, threads and start talking about things that they want to talk about. So just like we have a class, it's, it's a chance people want to have a voice. People want to interact with each other all these people have a very common bond they're texas tech um supporters of tech, they're fans of texas tech sit here and write um i have 5232 messages in my career of course a lot of those probably in the last couple of years um, haven't had as many messages just because i don't own it anymore i'm not interacting with these guys on a, on a day to day basis. But as a manager, you had to say, what are we going to do and how are we going to do it and how are we going to present our news? And for us, we did a lot of things at the time that were really crazy. See here, this question is for the uh, Bayou Matador report, Gators Bayou Matador report. That's something we started where uh, we sat and we just took questions from the subscribers and answered them. And we put it on video and it was very simple, but at the time, people thought it was crazy. Couldn't believe we were doing that. They couldn't believe we had that kind of uh, foresight to do that. We would uh, shoot video on the sidelines and at practices. And the, the traditional media would be like, who are these guys? What do they think they're doing? We saw it. We, kind of, we saw it as managers. Hey, this is where the industry is going. So how about this? You fast forward here to 2017 and 
back on June 28th, you get um, Fox Sports cuts web writing staff to invest more in online video. So now they're saying, if I can get rid of all these pop up ads they seem to have on there, I'm going to go up and you won't make me pay for that. Um, but they cut their staff. They cut, I'm not going to go pay for that. I had it up there for a little bit, but now it's gone. Oh, there you go. It's back. Um, Fox Sports cuts web writing staff to invest more in online video. And I think they had about 20 uh, writers that were writing for what they were doing. And those guys all gone. And now they're bringing in people that have more of a multi purpose. Uh, they can do things that can shoot, edit, and all those things. So a lot of the things that you guys said on your very first day of what you want to do makes you a valuable employee for places like Fox down the line. It's changing. Our business is changing right here again in front of our, our very eyes. We just did a agreement, our multi-rights agreement, and we're saying, how can we envision 10 years down the road? I mean, because 10 years ago, would people have imagined where we are now? Probably not. So again, you have to have a foresight to think about these things, what you're going to do, uh, where your business is going to go. Now, in the past, um, if you were in this class, you probably 90% of you or more back in the day would want to be a reporter of some sort, want to work in news. And so we're going to talk a little bit about news and how it's changed in the different um, in the different media structures, but it's always one of those things, especially if you're attractive. People have been telling you all your life, you should be on camera, right? You should do this, you should do that. Uh, there's a lesson to be learned about the video I'm about to show you, and you probably have all seen it. It's pretty old, it's 10 years old. Uh, it's the boom goes the dynamite guy, and uh, but I want you to watch it again, and it's and the guy has really he has really overcome any stigma he had from this. Let's watch and show uh, sometimes what can happen if you are news. Hello everyone. Well, the Ball State softball team continued to play this weekend and they were hoping to continue off their straight three out of four losses. And so we'll take a look and see how that happened. They started off good, but then eventually but the Ball State women's, women's team shot down and ended up being poorly. Okay. And we're going to continue on now. The latest Cardinals will play in Iowa tournament starting this Friday. Before the Ball State baseball team kicks off its conference season this, year, this weekend, the Cards will battle an in state rival Indiana tomorrow. Tomorrow's game will be the meeting between the two, beating both. Is on on the four on on the year, and they have won six of its last seven games tomorrow over the game three at 3 p.m. We're switching to Ball State men's tennis. It seems last we play on it seems every week that we have a player. Matt Lawrence is the latest Cardinals tennis player to win the award. Lamar won all the all the singles and the doubles matches last week. So far, the Cardinals have had a player honored on their week on the weekly award. Seven out of the nine uh, seven out of the nine weeks, the Cubs will play at Boise State in Bike this weekend. The Indian officials are looking for a measure of revenge tonight against the New Jersey Nets and to strengthen their playoff hopes. The Nets won the last Sunday's matchup, 94 to 85 which left the Pacers one game behind the Chicago in the seven series spot. Let's check out the comments. Steven Jackson steered the Jersey Miller's looking good. He shoots a three, and it's good. Maybe he gets the rebound, passes it to the man, shoots it, and boom goes the dynamite. 
final scores are now for the Pacers 63 to the Knicks 61. The Associated Press of the All-American first team in college baseball was announced today as Utah's seven-point sophomore center Andrew Bodice was the leading vote getting receiving 61st place votes. Bodice, who is an Australian native, received very little attention in the preseason, but averaged 20 points and 12 rebounds a game for Utah. The four other players joining Bogot on the AP team are senior forward Wayne Summers in Kansas of Kansas and Tyson Warwick of Syracuse. Junior guard JJ Reddick of Duke and sophomore, and sophomore guard Chris Paul of Wake Forest rebounded out first. Let's check out some of the scores tonight. The thing about this guy, his whole family probably watching. He's, um, man, we made my debut tonight uh, on the news, and uh, there's a lesson to be learned there. It is a test question. It's harder than it looks. And the guy is rebounding. I think he actually ended up in. Um, Waco or somewhere after that, and he's moved on with his life. Uh, good for him, but it can be hard sometimes. Again, not many of you, or if any of you, I'm trying to remember, want to be in news, want to be a reporter, want to be an anchor. But uh, in the past, electronic media kind of meant news, you know, journalism, you had uh, photography for news and all that. There's so much now different in the world, but I just want to go through a little bit of the things for the traditional news media. Uh, what they do, uh, um, television stations and radio stations to some extent, realize that news gives them the most visibility. News is the reason people tune into things. Um, this is why I think radio will always be around. Texas Tech fired Mike Leach back in 2009, and I hosted a radio show at the time, and we were on all day long, uh, wall-to-wall coverage of people calling in to talk because it was news, and local radio gave them a connection to that. And our society has become uh, dependent on electronic media for news and information. So you think about that, and we had a question on the discussion board earlier in the semester about that. When something big happens, where do you go? Where, what, what do you reach for? Do you reach for the TV remote? Do you reach for your phone? Do you reach for your iPad? Whatever. It's all electronic media, and people want to know, and that's how they keep informed. And for most people, electronic media not newspapers, are the primary sources for knowledge about national and international events. And if you think about it, it makes sense because where else are you going to get it, right? If it's not electronic media, you will you wait for your neighbor to tell you what's happening? No, you have to have some source to tell you what's going on. So obviously news is a key product of the electronic media. Now, again, if we think back to what we talked about in Chapter 5, the primary goal for anyone in electronic media is to make money. And so news is seen as an avenue towards that. I find this interesting and a little disturbing. Uh, in a Pew Research study, and we'll look a little bit more at Pew uh, tomorrow, the next step, nearly half of Americans get their news from Facebook. Now, think about that. I played golf with a guy that I've known for a really long time. We always go, this was back when President Obama was president. We always go to get breakfast first. We're sitting at breakfast, and he said, Hey, did you hear that uh, President Obama has outlawed the Pledge of Allegiance? I said, Could that be true? And he's like, Oh, yeah, read it on Facebook. So, quick search for me on my phone. Did realize that that was a hoax going around and that did not happen. So when you hear Donald Trump talk about fake news, that kind of stuff is fake news when a story is completely and blatantly made up. Now, if there's a story that's misreported or there's a mistake or there's a uh, error of some sort, it's not fake news. It's just a mistake. But 
some site going online posting on Facebook that whatever you've seen a million different things in half of Americans get their news from Facebook two of ten adults get their news from print newspapers now I do still get a print newspaper but I'm more, mostly for my job I don't use it to get my news so if you have a media organization news is important um, historically it's been a part of what our business has been about since the very beginning and then you go back to culturally it aids in the awareness of societal norms and we talked a little bit about uh, those things a couple of lectures ago our values our beliefs you kind of get a feeling for what is culturally uh, acceptable what's not and so news helps you in that there's different ways we can look at news localism would be uh, the primary primary uh, reason um, it's we went to, we talked about programming a couple days ago uh, it allows the station the station to produce several hours of news um, and very economically you've got it morning noon and night so all of our local stations do a morning show of some sort some of them do one for two hours some of them do one for three hours some do for four hours uh, then they generally have a noon broadcast of some sort a couple of them do some don't um, then there's an evening broadcast and there's a night then one late at night so they all have one the local stations nine o'clock on Fox ten o'clock on the other stations other three local network stations and it's programming for them and you know, they have a big staff and uh, allows them to sell advertising in there and they own all the advertising in it and so it's a money maker uh, the localism again is especially having done sports in the past here on the local news there's no reason for the news the sports guys to get up there and say hey the Cowboys won today everyone knows that they've known by the time they watch the news so localism keeping the stories about what's important in this area Texas Tech things like that is part of the local nature of, of sports but even the same way is no one is staying up to 10 o'clock going uh, no one is going hey uh, where's tech one tonight? Let's wait for the news. No, I mean, because we all have our phones, we all have different ways to find it out. But you do want to see local stories, and the, and the news can help you with that. We've seen this in every single one. I'm going to make a change probably at the end of the semester and change all these slides out because vary in size from market to market and type of city. Now, this is a little bit different because some stations don't necessarily have a commitment to news. They may have a news, and they have a skeleton crew that they use, and they get a lot of network stuff to put in their news. But if you really want to dynamite local news, you have to have a commitment to it, and it helps you increase the size of your new department, news department. And so, in all that, the news director, in charge of all local news, what gets what gets uh, covered, what doesn't get covered, who's covering what. And then how good you're doing your job, the performance of the news department. So he or she, as we talked about, is a sales director or a marketing director or a programming director. Not only do they have their day-to-day -day jobs, but they're, they're monitoring the performance of your job or when you work for them. So there's a couple of different people in the newsroom. The assistant news director assists producers and reporters on stories, um, sometimes has input on hiring almost always has input on the way a newscast is structured or a word that is used there and a word you heard uh, in programming also stacked and in the format of the news. Maybe this is a bonus question because I'm not I'm sure how many people remember the things I say in these lectures and I don't know how many people are actually listening at this point in the lecture. Matter of fact, I will say this right now. If you are listening right now, email me and say, I heard it, and I will give you five overall bonus points. How about that? You just email me right now and say, hey, I heard it. So I guess, hey, hey, I heard it. Five bonus points. Shows me you're listening. Because here's a test question for you. 
Now it's not going to be a bonus question because I'm giving you the bonus points now. The most important part of a local newscast is the weather. The least important is the sports. The reason you can tell that is how they're stacked in the program. Sports is at the end. Weather generally leads off. Weather gets a prominent role in uh, sports. Some, some local news stations don't even do sports anymore. They just get, hey, go to ESPN or Fox or whatever if you want to if you want to watch sports. So I have to apologize about this phone call. So I'm gonna let that go. Can go works for uh, works for a football program. I'm gonna hit ignore there. Um, so then you have an assignment set here. So remember that sports least important, weather most important. When I did the sports. Uh, I had a guy calling my radio show going, hey, you have 10 minutes. Why don't you talk about the Cowboys more? So first of all, I have three minutes. Secondly, uh, this is why I don't talk about the Cowboys. And then he came back and said, no, you I, you have 10 minutes. I've counted. I'm the guy doing the news. I understand. I never have 10 minutes. Then you have an assignments editor. And some places, the assistant news director acts as the assignment editor. But they meet every morning. They give the reporter a job to do. Go out and cover the story. Um, go they listen to the police scanners. Uh, if you ever go into a newsroom, it's really loud because there's a lot of scanners going off at the same time. And they look at the newspaper, and they get ideas from there. And that's what an assignment editor does. Um, there's an operations manager. Again, this varies on the size of your oper op your overall operation. Sometimes uh, this job is meshed into others because you have live stories, you have live events, you got trucks, you got all these things. So there's always an operations manager or called in our business also an engineer then you have an executive producer who supervises all the producers who help write the stories and write everything there so when you're watching a local newscast or not even a local newscast any newscast generally the anchor is reading the stuff that was written by the producer the eps or some combination of that and then you have the anchors who are the people that we all know we all see usually the highest paid person not only in the newsroom but generally in the building besides salespeople, and uh, we also call them talent. And talent sometimes can be hard to work with because they've been told their entire lives, hey, how great they are, and they want to be on camera, and there's a, there's a certain kind of person that wants to be on camera, that wants a microphone, and those kind of things. And sometimes for the right reasons, sometimes for the wrong reasons, sometimes a combination of both generally uh, think very highly of themselves, which isn't a bad thing necessarily. Anchors slash talent. Play-by-play -play people in uh, in sports, like myself, are listed as talent. They're saying, uh, where's the talent? The talent needs to go at this time. So, but in the news, people sitting there delivering the story are the anchors. Then you have reporters. So if you got a job uh, starting out, uh, you write stories, you work with uh, personnel, you go out sometimes with camera person, sometimes now you shoot yourself. Also very visible. You know, your people know who you are when you go out and do the stories. Uh, seeing less and less of these next two positions, photographers and editors. Uh, there used to be, when I first started out, you'd have a staff of photogs, photographers, and the people would be back at the station editing your news packages for you. Well, now that is different. Uh, now you're expected to do that. You're expected to be an MMJ, multimedia media journalist, or an MPJ, multi purpose journalist, and do all these things yourself. So now when people come to see me, I have a lot of reporters that are shooting their own stuff, editing their own stuff, doing all that on their own. Kiff Sports, and so, as I mentioned earlier, some stations doing away with sports. Some stations put a lot of uh, time, effort, and pride in their sports, but uh, it just depends on a lot of times the news director and the overall management of the station. This is for television, also could be for radio. And now, weather, we talked about the most important part of a newscast for a local station, the weather. And we've seen it all, the super duper Doppler, the Gigantron, or whatever, weather. So the news department, the news director has to maintain all of that, has the regular expenses, talent, which we know, again, is the anchors and the reporters, sometimes known as talent. 
and any other cost that comes running you, then no business, and then the capital expenditures, equipment, vehicles, etc. Uh, I worked for a guy named Charles Wood. He owned the stations, and he also ran for president, interestingly enough. Uh, unsuccessful, obviously, but he did try. And um, he would tell us that, uh, like, he would tell our news department uh, one time, this was years and years ago, uh, when they needed new vehicles, take the hubcaps off the old vehicles to get better performance, better gas mileage, all these other things. And so we'd be driving around, our news department would be driving around with our hubcaps on their, uh, on their tires. So the capital expenditures, hey, we need... Uh, um, you know, we need the new super duper Doppler. We need new uh, live band. We need these things. Those are called capital expenditures. And it's everything else that we've talked about. There's regular expenses, which is just running your operation, your day to day operational expenses. And then there's capital expenditures, things that you budget for, things that you say, hey, I'm going to need down the line. Again, all these slides will be online for you to uh, take the test. News is difficult to budget for because everything changes and um, you don't know what's going to happen. So if there's a, a, so for example here in Lubbock, let's say you're running a station in Lubbock and let's say there's a hurricane that hits the Gulf Coast in Texas. Well, that's probably something you want to send somebody down to cover. If you don't budget for that, all of a sudden there's, a, there's an additional expense there to deal with that you weren't really even sure about. Uh, the most expensive area of the news department includes personnel, which accounts for 60% of the budget. So some stations account for, if they have a budget of $100,000 for easy math, 60000 goes towards uh, the talent. Clearly, they've got bigger budgets than that in most places. So what you have to deal with, we'll go through some of these issues and then we'll be done for the day, is um, the general erosion of the news audience. You guys aren't watching local news. You've got to try to find a way, and that was one of our assignments. How do you generate more revenue? How do you get better audiences for your group? So it's one of your issues, erosion of the news audience. We've got convergence, which is newsrooms converging with other places. And again, it means you need to be able to work in multi multiple media uh, platforms. Sometimes if you're a sports fan like I am, you'll see this happen a lot, but you see it in, in politics too. Uh, people that generally have always written have been reporters now being asked, hey, to be on camera to talk about things. Some are okay, some are good, some are awful. There's convergence. There's trying to find ways that, hey, we can get our story out to different people in different ways. And you've got to negotiate with talent. Most talent, um, especially the anchors, have a contract and very specific contract that talks about their pay, their benefits, and other things they get. And in most cases, especially in television, primarily, but a lot in radio too, when it's a really well known personality, they have a non compete clause. And if they leave a station, the non compete might say, Hey, you can't work in this market for 90 days, you can't work in this market for Two years. It just depends on what the what the number is. I didn't know compete when I left uh, Fox 34, um, and it was a two year no compete. And about nine months in, I wanted to do something with our local PBS station, and so I had to call and work that out. So because they put a lot of time, effort, money, revenue, obviously capital, into promoting you. And they don't want you to turn around and go into a different station in the market. So they being management. Other issues, uh, ratings, everyone, everything is measured. Everything is looked at very closely. Um, in television, there are four sweet periods, February, May, July, November. Most stations don't pay attention much to the July one, but the others are, are fairly important. That's why you'll see uh, big controversial news stories done at certain times of the year. If it's a series of, of stories or something along those lines, it's done during ratings. And so you balance that. 
what do people want to see versus is this the right thing for us to show? So as a news department, you deal with that. And that becomes an ethical issue too. Um, live shots, hidden cameras, uh, how you present things. What do you show? Do you use video news releases, which a lot of places do? They'll send video out and say, hey, here's something we're doing, and we've given you all the video. There's an ethical issue for the news department to say, gosh, uh, should we be using this? Should, does this... Um, does this look like we are partnering up with that company for uh, what they're sending us? So you have to deal with those issues as well. Race and race, race and ethnicity issues. You want to present news in a balanced manner. You also want to make sure you have in-house diversity. You want to make sure that what you're presenting on the air reflects your audience, and so you have to deal with all those things. Uh, television stations and radio stations primarily are licensed by the federal government, so they do have certain uh, EEO issues they have to deal with when they're hiring, how they do it, how they list a job, uh, text text the same way. That's a good thing, right? Because you want to make sure everyone has a chance uh, to get a job and to work in your area. So if you don't have that, if you don't have that right balance, that's an issue. That's an issue as being a news manager. Don't see this in much here uh, locally, dealing with unions and um, you know, some some places uh, called union shops, and everyone there is a union employee, and no one can pick that up because that's a union job uh, or it, whatever. There's lots of different issues with unions, but you don't necessarily see that in our part of the. Uh, all right, so we will uh, finish up here. We're going to talk to some changes uh, tomorrow about some changes in news coverage. Tomorrow might be kind of a, a potpourri of uh, different things from news and also from sales. So, again, if you owe me an email based on today's, uh, make sure you send it and get your assignment for done, and we will talk to you tomorrow.